So I have um, an issue with your stance on abortion. Okay. Right. So you define life as starting at conception through biology, pretty, right? Pretty much. But I think you take the stance that life is intrinsically valuable because it's life. And that's where I disagree. I think there's two things that make life valuable. I think consciousness, the ability to experience pain, senses, and stuff like that, and personal identity, in particular, uh, psychological continuity identity. So the fact that we have memories, we have relationships, people have relationships to us. I think those are two. Do you two need both of those? Is it either or? I just want to clarify um, your position. Either or. Okay, so if it's either or, then people with Alzheimer's have real continuity problems. You can't kill them. No, because people still have um, relationships with them, though, right? So like, just because well, you have like. I mean, you have a relationship with them, but with people with advanced stage Alzheimer's, they really don't have a relationship with Okay, but with you. for the sake of example, like let's say someone dies, right? The family gets to decide what you do with the body. Because I know what you say. When, it, when you say someone says, oh, it's just consciousness, and then they're brain dead, you say, well, can you stab them? No, you can't. Because that's the family's decision what to do with the body. It's the person's decision what they so want to do. So if the family decides to stab them, it's okay to stab the, the When they're brain dead? In... Yeah, if they want to... No, pull not, not, not brain dead. Let's say that you're comatose for a, for a specifically and predictably short period of time. Say nine months. Say so now, well, what, what is the person... <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I saw. So, so I would say uh, on the, the legal grounds, it would depend if the, what the person put in their will. If the person has made clear statements like, hey, don't pull the plug on nine months, then don't do that. Because I think the first choice is. Right, get, but let's say the person has not made such clear statements. Say the person can't make such clear statements. So, that, and he's just in a complete coma? The, the, let's say the person has not drawn up a living will or had conversations like this. They so go into, they're in a car crash, they, they get so in a coma. Say, you know that in nine months they're going to come out of the coma and they're going to be fine. Are you allowed to stab? Is so wait, the family so say, you know what? So These nine fine, months, fine. stab the dude. Wait, so they're let's fine. So they're thing. going to get their memories back? Um, let's say they don't get their memories back. Then I would say that that person is dead. And yeah, if the family wants to pull the plug, that's fine. <laughs> I'd have no okay. problem with that. Yeah. No, I would have no problem with that. Because that, like, cause that, per like, that person is dead. You're getting dead. into some dicey territory, dude. No, I think that person is dead. <laughs> Right? And the, that's the best way to define life, is personal identity and consciousness. That's what makes life valuable. Right, so I think that, again, if you were to say both, that's too much. And if you were even to say either, I don't think either one of those legs stands on its own. Okay, because what you really mean, th this is the thing about having a baby. It's a process of development. Right? And this is the point that I'm making. There's yeah. a period in this human life when that child does not have, or fetus or embryo, whatever you want to call it, when this living thing does not have consciousness and does not have a sense of identity. But in nine months, it will have consciousness. Well, and even then, by, like the way, by the way, babies, babies don't have a sense of identity for at, least, for, for at least a certain number of months after they're born. I mean, they um, babies, the babies can uh, recognize their parents' voices after they're born. That's not a sense of identity. Rats can No, no, identify. no, I'd say it is. Because it, it's, no, it's a form of memory, though. Right? And that's what I was uh, using. So, my... are, so are you a Jainist? Because animals also have consciousness. No, yeah, no, I would identity. say that killing animals is wrong. You have no problem with that. So just to get this straight. <laughs> killing, killing Fluffy the hamster, deeply wrong. <laughs> killing a dude who wakes up from a, who's going to wake up from a coma in nine months with memory problems, totally cool. The first state to legalize abortion in the case of rape or incest was Colorado in 1967. Hawaii followed in 1970. We can reasonably assume that there were abortions before then. So if we went back to a world where abortion was illegal, how would we deal with the black market? How do you th what do you think positive or negative consequences would be of an increased amount of illegal abortions? And would we prosecute both the mother and the doctor? or just one, how would we handle it? So the, the answer to the question is that there's no major pro-life voice in America who advocates for prosecuting the mother. The reason that people don't advocate for prosecuting the mother is number one, because it is counterproductive because your goal is to convince women that they shouldn't abort their babies, not to threaten them with punishment. You want, to make, you want them to make the moral choice. You want to, basically, honey is going to win people over more than vinegar. But beyond that, I think that there is a real problem of mens rea, meaning that when you're talking about intent to commit a crime, you actually have to have an intent to commit the crime. So if I'm going to commit homicide upon you, then I have to know that you are a human being, for example. I think that a lot of women have been made to believe for wrong reasons that what they are killing is not actually a human being, and so they lack the requisite mens rea for a homicide charge, even if you were to try and game it out legally. Mostly what people on the pro-life side have talked about is prosecuting abortion doctors who make an actual business out of, out of aborting babies. As to the increase in illegal abortions, 
I would assume there would be an increase in illegal abortions because all abortions would be illegal. And just logically speaking, anytime you make something illegal that occurs, there will be more illegal instances of that thing happening. And I'm sure that you know, when, when slavery was legal, uh, then you know, it was legal. That didn't make it either moral, decent, or right. Once it was made illegal, then I'm sure that everyone who was holding a slave was in violation of the law. You know, so I guess there were more illegal holdings of slaves after we made slavery illegal. But there was less absolute slavery, which is the actual goal. Illegally holding a slave doesn't kill the slave and doesn't possibly kill the mother. I don't think you want to go down the road where you're justifying slavery. I'm not justifying slavery. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, I'm, no, really, I'm not I, justifying slavery. I'm saying that, making some, that the fact that something increases when you make it illegal is... The illegal activity is... is, is, is the, activity de the, the, the absolute level of the activity decreases... But what's left is going to be illegal just by logical necessity. When, what's, when, what's left is e when the illegal activity that's left is very, very dangerous, that's, is that a good argument? Do you think that's a good argument or not a good argument? Yes. If I have to, it, it, let's, let's say that you make abortion illegal and there are a million abortions a year in the United States. And let's say at the high end, let's say at the high end, there are still 50,000 illegal abortions in the United States. But all the rest go to term. Okay, let's say that that's the case. Because it's going to be hard to actually get an abortion if it's made illegal. Let's say there's still 50,000. You just saved 950,000 lives. That is, a, that is a massive net win, obviously. This is going to be mildly graphic, but this is important because I'm sick of the euphemisms, okay? It's not aborting a fetus. It's not getting rid of a ball of tissues, uh, a ball of tissue. Okay, this is, this, what I'm about to show you right now is a picture of a baby, okay? This is a baby that was, that was, it was a, it was a picture of a baby uh, that was aborted by Kermit Gosnell, okay? This is, the, the Gosnell was, it was somebody who was not covered by the media uh, in any way, shape, or form. He was the most prolific serial killer probably in American history, and this was a baby girl uh, uh, aborted by, aborted by Kermit Gosnell, uh, and he, and the only question was whether it was legal for him to kill this baby or not. And the only question there was how old was the baby, and was the abortion done inside the womb or outside the womb? Okay, so the, this baby, I believe, was after the 24-week cutoff, but not by much. So this this baby is. Uh, uh, let's see how how old this baby is. This is uh, a case where uh, where. They, an abortion went awry. She went to a hospital, and the baby ended up dying at the hospital. By 24 weeks, most babies born prematurely will survive. This is a, a late-term abortion, okay? This, this, this is what her baby looks like in the womb. We can see that picture again. That's what that baby looks like. This is a less graphic picture of what an abortion looks like, okay? A more graphic picture of what abortion looks like involves the snipping off of the, uh, the crushing of the skull, the sucking out of the brains. It involves, and, and these are fully formed children. These are fully formed children. I have two beautiful children. The idea that you get to murder a kid Okay, no one has a right to choose that picture. Go back to the other one. No one has a right to choose this. No one. No one has a right to choose this. You don't have a right to choose this, okay? That's a baby. You don't get to kill it just because it's convenient to you. You don't have a right to say, I, I, it's my decision where and when and how to have the baby. That's an individual human being. And if that baby were outside the womb and you stuck a knife through its chest, you'd be charged with first-degree murder. You kill it in the womb, and we call it a human right. That's not a human right because that's a human, and that human doesn't have any rights because you just decided its rights are less important than your right to your own convenience. Despicable. Despicable. And so I want to, uh, we're now going to play a game with the left. Let's play, let's play a little game with the left. The game goes like this, okay? Show the other image. The, the game goes like this. At which point should you be able to kill this baby? Okay, we're going to play a game called when should you be able to kill this baby? Because I've been told by people like Hillary Clinton that you're able to kill this baby all the way up to the very end, right? 32 to 30 weeks. Right? And that's when the baby is fully formed. It can be born alive. It is a fully formed human being. I've watched two of them come out of my wife. These are human beings. These are not balls of tissue. These are not clusters of cells. And I'm sick of being told that it's just an abortion. I don't like the euphemisms. It's not a termination of a pregnancy. It's a termination of a human life. Okay, It's a murder of a human being when you're talking about these babies and, and this idea that you get to choose that. Look, you got to choose a lot of things in life. You don't get to choose another human being's death. That's not something you get to choose. So when is it okay to kill this? When is it okay to kill this? Is it okay to kill this thing at week 14? When the heart is pumping several quarts of blood through the body every day? How about week 15 when the baby has an adult's taste buds? How about month four when the bone marrow is beginning to form? How about that? Or how about, the, how about weeks nine and 10 when the baby's teeth are already beginning to form? Its fingernails are already beginning to develop. We're talking about two months old, right? The baby can turn the head and frown. The baby can hiccup. Is that okay to kill? How about week four? By the end of the week four, 
The, the kid is already 10,000 times larger than the fertilized eggs was. There's already the beginnings of eyes and legs and hands. There are already brain waves detectable. Mouth and lips are present. Fingernails are forming. How about week three? By the end of the third week, the kid's backbone and spinal column and nervous system are forming. The liver and kidneys and intestines are beginning to take shape. How about day 22? The heart's already beating with the child's blood, which may be of a different blood type than the mother. So where in here exactly do you think it's okay to murder that kid because you have a personal convenience issue? Where do you think that you're right? And I love, I love the glowing way she presents this. Here I am. I can't be a bad woman because I'm pregnant. I can't hate babies. I mean, here I am. I'm pregnant. Well, if you don't hate babies or if, you, if you're not interested in killing them, then why are you in favor of people being allowed to kill them? Because it's not a matter of a woman's right to choose. A slave owner didn't get to choose to hold slaves. Nazis didn't get to decide which Jews got to live. And don't give me the it's legal, therefore it's okay. Lots of things were legal. Lots of things in human history have been legal that were totally evil. Okay, it is evil to suggest, as Hillary Clinton does, that the minute before a baby is born, you should be able to drag it by the feet out of the mother, except for the head, stick a scissors in there, ram it into the baby's skull, rip the skull open, suck the brains out, crushing it, and then pull it out. That's Hil that, that Hillary believes that that's something you should be allowed to do. When I talk about stuff I hate, this is a grave sin. It's a blot on the American Republic. It's a blot on the morality of the American people that we allow, that we treat the killing of unborn, the, the most, literally the most innocent among us, literally the most innocent among us. We, we treat the killing of, of these human beings as nothing more than just an issue of, of, of convenience and, and choice and, and all the rest of it. It's just no more euphemisms, no more euphemisms. And I wish to God that Mike Pence would have said that instead of citing to the Bible, okay? I haven't cited the Bible one time because I don't think that the Bible, I think the Bible is right, but I don't think the Bible is the important textbook here. I think what's important here is the science. And I think you're talking about the creation of a unique human life on day one, and you can see it, and you can see the growth, and if you're willing to point out to me where it is that this becomes a human as opposed to a ball of tissue, then let's hear it. Let's hear it. I've gotten tweets, by the way. I tweeted this out earlier, and somebody said, well, the brain waves only start at week 20. So how about that? You know, do you think that people who are brain dead are alive? Well, people who are brain dead don't turn into not brain dead th three weeks later. Would you kill somebody in a coma because they're brain dead, but you know they're not going to be brain dead in four weeks, in ten weeks? Would you do that? Would you pull the plug on them knowing for a full, full on fact that if you just wait a few weeks, that person's going to be fully functional again? Would you do that? And it's just, it's, it's, it's truly incredible to me the, the way that we can blind ourselves to this. I remember when I was at the, I was at the 2012 DNC and, uh, and I, I went to, you know, it was in Charlotte and I walked past an exibit. And it was a picture, it was, it was the, the anti-abortion crowd, the pro-life crowd. And they were out there with, with these pictures of aborted babies. And I walked past and I thought what most people from big cities thought. I thought, wow, how gauche. How gauche. I mean, those are ugly pictures. Should I really have to look at that in the public square? That's really ugly. And then I realized that that's probably how people treated pictures of slavery back in the 1850s. That's probably how people treated pictures of the Holocaust back in the 1940s. The bottom line is if it's that ugly, maybe you should do something about it instead of whining about how ugly it is. And it's not a matter of personal choice. Okay, I have a stake in whether my neighbor gets murdered. And I have a stake in whether my neighbor's baby gets murdered too.